Good day, everyone. We feel privileged to connect with you today, sharing the moment of exposition with you. So, how are you today? How is your weekend? You know, the end of the week. Today, we started off with the background story of the elder brother. Of the elder brother, and thought we have a kind of start. So, we hope mm -hmm. to gain a momentum this today as we look into that elder brother story. But yesterday, I thought we were all just going through the head mm. brother story, but we just find the story of the father again mm. in it. We saw mm. the father again. If you follow yesterday, we saw the father again was out. Mm. Just like he was out calling the younger son home, we found that he was out. It was, it, it was very, very forthcoming. We saw the father coming out, very forthcoming, waiting for mm. the son, for the head son to mm. trying to bring him out. Mm. So we saw this nature of the father repeated again the elder brother story, and there are so mm. many issues. Yesterday we, mm. we 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 saw that the, the, the he has anger in mm. him, mm. and he gave the reason why he was angry. Mm. He felt he had labor, and then mm. there was something yesterday that I think the uh, the hallmark for me yesterday was the uh, elder son, the the philosophy of the elder son thinking that. Mm. The giving of the father is based on the labor, so because he came up with point. Yeah. Saying he's been doing this, he's been mm. doing this, he never transgressed, yes, but he doesn't understand the giving of the father, what the giving of the father is tied to. Mm. And if you remember yesterday, Peter was trying to lead us into James, telling us what the giving of the father is about. Mm. Because I know some people are just like that, the elder brother, thinking the giving of the Lord is tied to how much of work, the labor of their hands, the toys, Mm. their own givings but we mm. find out in that james he reminded us that he gives the library mm. he gives without finding fault so mm. i think let me i've done enough of talking about it he really okay. wants to get about it you you want to go back into that episode and listen and have a listen again mm. so today we'll continue with the elder brother we still want to know more about this elder brother yeah now thank you viewers thank you for joining us now right from yesterday the, on the, the junction where we stopped was looking at uh, the elder son who got confused and who became angry at a father that uh, he seemed not to be able to understand how he actually chose to give because here was a younger son who actually wasted his father's resources and the father was going to, you know, the father already killed a calf and he was celebrating the younger son and the elder son was wondering why he was left out and then today we will then carry on with this and there's something I want us to our viewers to come into today as we look at this episode today. Um, this elder son, mark the word, elder son, there's the word son after the word elder. So he is a son and we know mm -hmm. that. Now if you're listening to this episode and you are a Christian and you're born of God, uh, you need to know just being a Christian is not just a procedure that happened to you. It's not just some kind of method or some kind of um, um, something like just the title it's deeper than that John chapter 1 actually told us about the fact that Jesus came unto his own and his own did not receive him but as unto many that received him and believed on his name he gave them the right of being called the son of God so what happens at new birth what happens at becoming a Christian beyond just the title Christian is the fact that you have received the right of sonship and the book of Romans 8 tells us that we have received the spirit of sonship into our heart by which we cry Abba Father so Christianity is all about transforming from being somebody who was born of the flesh or somebody who had a natural descent you have become the son of God so I want you to begin to picture yourself as a son of this father, if you are truly born of God. The elder son is a son of the father. Now, that being said, he approached the father and he was confused about the basis upon which this father will give things to his, um, to his children. Because he said two things to the father. He said, I have labored, I have served you all this while. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, I made sure I kept the rules, the laws, down to the letter. And I expected on that basis. Now, if, if, you, if, if the elder son was doing all these things, the question you want to figure out is, why 
did he do that? Why is it that he made sure that he didn't break any single regulation of the father? And no, why, why was he laboring? Don't, don't forget that if you, want, if you want to look at his father as laboring, think about the fact that when the younger son was being celebrated, the elder son was in the field. So actually, he was taking care of the, fa of the family's agricultural enterprise. He was in the field. So he was right when he said he was laboring. And if it was wrong, <laughs> the father would have corrected him. Said yeah, he he, in fact, they said he was in the field when they began celebrating the younger son. He was at work. We should give him credit for that. He was actually true to what he said. He is, he is belaboring. He has never transgressed because the father would have objected and said, no, sometimes you transgress. That's so, the thing. And I want to find out why is he doing all this? And you see, to be a good thing. Yeah, so but, yes. but there has to be a motivation for why the elder son is doing all this. And I was looking for this. And if you look at that story in Luke chapter 15, you will find out that he actually gave the father the reason why he has been doing all these things all his life. Now, we don't even know how old he is. It could be 25. As at the time of this parable, it could be 30. Jesus did not tell us his age, but he has been doing all these things. And what's the reason for that? If you look carefully, Luke 15, um, verse 29, he told us the reason. He said, you never gave me a young goat to celebrate with my friends. Now, listen. Now we know why he's been doing all these things. He's saying the reason why he has kept the rules and he has labored all this while was so that there will be a basis for the father to at least give him something, a young goat. Now, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's mind-boggling. This young, this elder son is saying the reason why he has gone to all this length was so that he could have a basis to even demand something from the well, father as a young goat. Mm -hmm. Now, this is quite something quite thoughtful and insightful. And the reason why he was angry then was because there was the younger son who got a calf being killed on his behalf. The fattest calf. And who had not been as careful like, as, it was. as the elder son was. And he actually became angry. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, this is where the whole problem is. And like I said, if you're listening to this, mm -hmm. and you are a son, which the Bible says you are, if you are born of Christ. Mm -hmm. John 1 says you are a son. Romans 8 says you are a son. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to then come to the same thought process. Hmm. Of this elder son. On what basis? On what basis did the younger son have the fattest calf being killed on his behalf? Hmm. And don't forget, he, this elder son has done all he has been doing all his life. So that the father can give him. Hmm. So that the father can give him. And this talks to us in the kingdom. Who believe that the father should owe us or give us. Not just on the basis. Now, the, the, see, there's something that comes to mind. Why did the younger son had the fattest calf been killed on his behalf? Because he was a son. Hmm. Just because he was a son. Just because he was born of the father. Now, see the father's response. And I want you all to listen to what the father told the elder son. Now, please, read what the father... Now, if you look at um, verse 31 of Luke chapter 15, the response of the father to the son is quite amazing. The father said... My son, the father said, you're always with me. With me. See, he started with my son. Wait, so he said the identity. He said, my son. My son. Maybe I was forgotten. You don't need to, the, the reason for laboring. Now, please don't get us wrong on this um, expose. We have not come here to say it's wrong. To belittle labor. To labor. In fact, the Bible says, do not be slothful in business. That's what the Bible says. It said, do not be slothful in business, fathomed in the spirit, serving the Lord. Now, Jesus said himself that must I not be about my father's business? Now, the Bible says, do not be lazy, but be imitators of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. We do not. Belittle the power of being consistently laboring in the kingdom. We there have we, instances in the we, scriptures. We, we, we do not belittle that. That supports labor. We, we, we've, we, we've, we've got to labor. Labor in the word. Labor in the place of prayer. 
labor in this and that in things of the in kingdom business, in our... and we do not believe you the fact of making sure that you walk in the light of the word making sure that you keep the word of the lord jesus said if you love that the bible says if you love me that's the first john 5 is jesus said if you love me you keep my commandments and the bible said if we love him we'll keep his commandments we're not belittling following god's commandments and we're not belittling laboring in the kingdom but what we belittle is the motivation yeah. The basis, the reason for why you do what you do in the kingdom. Why do you pray? Why do you study the Bible? Why do you do evangelism? Why do you give? Why do you give? Why do you execute your spiritual activities? Now, the motivation is what we're talking about. The elder son thought that these were going to be the basis for why the father should give him. And see what the father said. The father said, my son. You are always with me. What does that mean? Mm. You see, the scripture says to us, it says that Jesus said, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. That's what Jesus said. And he said, the slave is not in the house forever. But he said, a son is in the house forever. Yeah. So when the father told him, my son, you are with me forever. He says, come on, you are a son. Yeah, only sons, you. only sons can be in the house forever. It's too time to tell him. What are you talking about? You're saying, I couldn't give you a, a young goat. You are a son. Mm -hmm. You are a son. And you're in the house. Uh, you are, if you're in the house, now that's why the Bible says, he said, he said a son is in the house forever. A slave is not in the house forever. So when the father told him in the verse 31st and said, you are in the house forever. You're always with me. It means you are a son. The father was trying to tell him, the only basis why you can get a young goat is simply the fact that you are a son. Hmm. Now, now, look what he said then. He said to him, and everything I have is yours. So you mean to tell me that you need to labor, you need to keep every regulation because you want a young goat? You missed the point. Everything I have is yours. Hmm. Hmm. You don't need any amount of laboring in the kingdom. You don't need any amount of keeping the rules in the kingdom as the basis for why God must answer your prayer. Now, to get something. Listen, like I said, don't get this wrong. We didn't say you must not labor in the kingdom. Now, in fact, in, the, in some of our next series, we will talk about the motivation for righteousness, the motivation for labor in the kingdom, the motivation for doing things right. There's, the, there's a motivation for that. But it's a wrong motivation for you to think you can propel God or you can turn the hand of God or you can make God do what God did before in Christ. Now, let's clarify this, which is very important. Now, my question is, if this father is as benevolent as we see him to be to the younger son, the younger son who wasted his father's inheritance, the father killed a calf for him, welcomed him back home, and they celebrated the younger son. If this father is that benevolent, and this father is simply saying to the elder son that everything I have is, is yours. yours, and you are a son, and you're in the house forever, now I need to begin to ask the question, how come this elder son have had, has had no access to a young goat? How come a young goat has not been killed for him and his friend, as he said? Because, you see, he's, he's painting a picture that the elder son He's painting a picture of the father, which is very bad, because he said, you have not given me. Now, look at that word. The elder son said, you have not given me. And the father said, what? All things are yours. Yeah. Now, who, 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 who is confused here? That something is wrong here. There is a, a kind of dichotomy going on. There's a clash going on, because the father said to the younger son, uh, to the elder son, the father said, all things are yours. Yes. And, the elder, and the elder son is saying, you have not given me. me. So where is the problem? <laughs> there is a breakdown of communication here. And no you see, here. this breakdown of, that you can see understanding is the same thing happening between God and so many Christians. Today. A breakdown of understanding between God and so many Christians. Because so many Christians are there say, Father, give me this. Give me joy. Give me peace. Give me this blessing. Give me that progress. Give me that, um, you know, this, this benefit. We keep... Get, we're asking God, give me this and give me that. The father keeps saying. And the father keeps saying, like he said to the elder son, well, you know what? All, all you things are, are son. Ha You are a son. You are with me. You are with me and all things are yours. Are yours. Now, we are here today to link that divide. 
Yes, to break that gap. To bridge that gap in understanding that has kept this elder son in the house trying to make effort to, to ensure that... To hem a goat. To hem a goat. And he has not done enough. <laughs> and he has still not even gone to the point of grabbing the goat. Mm -hmm. And the younger son, who has not been as near perfect, is the one wasteful. who wasted the resources, was the one that got the uh, fattest calf, the not fattest even a young goat. Calf. And that's why the elder, the, the elder brother was it's really angry. angry. Now, let's say this. What the father told him was accurate. The father said, all things are yours. And that's the thing we've stressed in the past. Mm. That the Bible says, we, we have been blessed with all spiritual, spiritual blessings, blessings in Christ Jesus. God will not bless us. In fact, the KJV version says, ah, H-A-T-H. He said, God ah, blessed us. God is not in the process of blessing us. He's not saying, well, if it you... will do that. He will bless us in a matter of time. If you act well, I will bless you in a matter of time. He said, he ah, blessed us. Mm -hmm. And we know the verse that says that his divine power oh, has, has given, given us all, all things. things. That has to do with life and godliness. Not some of the things. Not 50% of the things. All things that has to do with life and godliness. So it means that if the father told the elder son that all things are yours. The only reason he has never had a young goat in his life is because he's not taking it. Yeah. He is not receiving it. He is not receiving it. He's not taking it. It's got nothing to do with the father. Is because the elder son is not taking what the father said is his. And he is going all about trying to do what we call Slaving. religion. Hmm. That's religion. Working out for it. Religion. It means he's trying to slave out. He's work for it. He's trying to work for it. And what it belongs to him hmm. purely on the basis of sonship. That's why the father told him, you are in the house forever. Why are you talking like this? You're talking like a slave. I mean, you, you are in the house Forever. You are a son. And all things I have is yours. And this is what we must have in kingdom mindedness. That all things that the Father has. In fact, the Bible calls us joint heirs with Christ. That's a serious word. It's, it's saying that we are co heirs. It means H E I R S. Yes. It means whatever the Father <laughs> is going to grant to the Son, which He did because of the Son's obedience, everything He gave Jesus. Everything that Jesus deserves with his name. You know, the name of Jesus deserves a lot. The Bible says, he, though he, he was a son, that's Jesus, but he lent obedience by the things that he suffered. And because of what Jesus went through, the process and the procedure he went through, he, 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 he earned, obedience. He, he, Jesus earned a lot of things. His name earned so many things for him. In fact, Philippians 2 tells us yeah. that because of his suffering, and he became obedient to the point of death, the death of the cross. Yeah. Wherefore, the Father has given he, him a name. He earned the name. <laughs> Jesus earned it. Jesus paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. And the Bible then says to you and I, we are co-heirs. Yes, just have it transferred. It means it's saying that whatever Jesus deserved, the Bible says you deserve the same. But see, Jesus got it because he paid for it. He earned it. But the Bible says you have the right to the yeah. same level of inheritance and benefit that Christ deserved because of his lifestyle. Now, if the Bible says we do deserve it, how can then can we be like this elder son who is going to say, you did not give me? That's the see. The, see you see that you did not give me accusation in the prayers of so many Christians. You did not give me. You, 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 all, all you need to do is listen to the prayer point. The prayer point says something like, Father, this year, um, I mean, before the year runs to an end, uh, you, you've got to give me this. Don't look at me like this. Don't let the year go without you doing something about my case. Those are prayers that are simply coding and telling God, you have not given me. Mm. Prayers that keep saying, God, you know what? Uh, I mean, uh, and, 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 and next year or the coming year, I don't want next year to be like this coming year. Father, do something. Look, don't look at me like this. Among my friends, among my peers. When you say those things in prayers... You have just taken on the emblem of the elder son because you keep saying, Father, you know what? Yeah, the reason I am what I am today, the reason I am in my situation is because you have not given me. Some don't even go further to say, I've done this, just like the yes. Oh, okay, now, now that's I'm slaving. You know what I'm They have justification. <laughs> thank you for, for that make, kind of prayer. Thank you for making reference to that. Some even thread the father and say, Father, you know what? <laughs> I, I, unlike my friends, I, I've lived a good life. 
Mm. I've sacrificed my time. You never transgressed. Like I, the I've side. never transgressed. I've evangelized to 10 people uh, I mean, in the past few months. I, and I've actually brought three people to church. Even though I was very busy, I did it. I brought three people to church. I have several reasons why they should and, end. And they give God the basis and say, God, please, you need, to do, you, need, you need to do this in my life on that basis. You see, once you do that, you keep accusing a loving father that he didn't give you. Mm -hmm. And this father's response to you, and you see, there's, there's one thing that comes to mind, and I, and I think every Christian should know this. The fact is, I don't know how long this elder son had been in this kind of darkness of thinking. Yes. We don't know how long the elder son was the stuck was stuck on this kind of mentality. We don't know how long he was stuck on it. We don't know it could have taken him 5, 10, 15 years. And my question is, how, so, and if the father knew that everything was his, mm -hmm. and all he could do was just what, take it. Now the question is, why hasn't the father just, just, it at him. just, yeah. just push it on his head and say, come on, you are a son. This is your young goat. And, 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 and you're wondering why? Why, mm. why didn't the father do something like that? And you see, what comes to mind is simply the fact that giving is the father's business. Mm. Receiving is our business. The father will never receive for you. So that's where the whole mm. point is. Giving is the father's business. Receiving is your responsibility. That's why, look at where you got saved. Ephesians 2 tells us, for by grace are you saved through faith. You see, grace is God's business and faith is your responsibility to respond to what God mm. has done. You, there's not, see, if you refuse to take, to what accept and receive the fact that I am a son and if I'm a son, all things the Father has is mine. That's verse 31. And this, I'm going to take the young goat. Unless you walk in the understanding, you will just be in the Father's house and everybody will have a fatted calf. And you will be there grumbling and complaining why you have no young goat. When, anyway, all the time, all things were I yours. Think, hmm. I think it's a great, because it could go on and on on this mm. today. But I just want the people to have enough time mm. to really think about it. I think this, this, mm. this part of the story is bringing more questions than answers. Mm. So we try to, because now we started trying to question in our mind. Mm. Why would the father not throw it at him? Yeah. So we started off that. Mm. So we hope that next Saturday, 7 p.m., mm. you will join us as we continue this series. I hope yeah. you are keeping all these things in mind and you are thinking about it yourself mm. and see where, where do you stand. Mm. Are you the kind of person that have the, you are any what is already given? Mm. Or try, are you forgotten try, that you are get, a son? Try to get what has been given. Yes, mm. any need. Mm. And they're working, out, working for it. Mm. You know, working for what is already given. Mm. Or you are forgotten that you are a son. Mm. You know, that kind, and mm. that shapes what your expectation from the father, and that shapes how you relate to the father, thinking mm. you must end. Mm. And I think that's why the father was starting to address it mm. by calling him, you are a son. Mm. Because you're just thinking house. like a slave, like mm. a servant that he's to hand his wages to hand his pay, mm. and the father's calf. Mm. So trying to remind, I hope mm. you'll be remember, you will be reminded today mm. that you are a son. As long as you have given your life to Christ, you are mm. a son. The right if, if you will not remember anything today, just remember, you are a son. And that accords you a lot of rights in the kingdom. So many things mm. have been said today, so many mm. gems. So just mm. take, your, take your time out to think about this and listen to this again. Mm. So we hope to see you next Saturday. So mm. stay and enjoy your sonship. Mm. So bye. Bye.